So nowadays when you're gassing up your car, there's even entertainment right there on the gas pump, right? And sometimes you'll hear, get ready, here comes the word of the day. So get ready, here comes the word of today, at least for this homily, and it's divinization. Divinization. So literally, it means to make divine or make God. Now, as Christians, we know and believe firmly that there is only one God in three persons. So no one else and nothing else can become God. But this term divinization is really meant to get at us becoming more like him, being more conformed to God, being more united to God is this process divinization. And an early church father from the fourth century, Saint Athanasius, said this about this concept. The Son of God became man so that man can become God. Again, not that we become God ourselves, but we become united to him, joined to him, transformed and conformed to be like him. And so we know Jesus Christ, he's the second person of the Trinity, the eternal word. So from the beginning of time, he existed, but he didn't always have a body. He was pure spirit as God until the mystery of the incarnation. When by the power of the Holy Spirit coming down upon the Blessed Virgin Mary, she conceived and Jesus became man. He took on our flesh. So it's not like God said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pretend to be a person and walk around and do stuff. He really became a man, still God. So his divine nature and his human nature perfectly united in one person. He became man. The Son of God became man so that we might become God. And so we know that he lived among us. He suffered. He learned through obedience to become more perfect. Right? So he was obedient to Mary and Joseph. He learned what suffering is, growing up poor, a refugee. He experienced rejection, loss, physical suffering, right? He was rejected by the Jewish leaders, turned over to Pontius Pilate. We know that he suffered and died. But then he rose again from the dead, right? Just like 42 days ago, we celebrate this at Easter, Jesus' resurrection. And he didn't rise as a ghost his body rose as well. And he goes to great lengths to make sure that the apostles know that when he appears to them. He says, look at me, I'm not a ghost. Give me something to eat if you want to touch the nail marks in my hands inside, right? Proving he is still resurrected, body, blood, soul, and divinity, his human body. And then when he ascends into heaven, he doesn't just kind of ride off into the sunset when he's done with the apostles or he doesn't sort of just disappear in front of their eyes. But no, he's taken up body, blood, soul, and divinity into heaven. And they can literally look up and watch Jesus in his body going to heaven. And that's where he is right now. Body, blood, soul, and divinity. There's a human body there, and it's Jesus in heaven. And so as he sits at the right hand of God the Father, reigning as king over all, He's literally in his body, sitting there on a throne, the same way that you can sit right now on these pews. All those body parts. Back, legs, everything in between. He's got them in heaven. And why does he do this? To bring our humanity to heaven with him. Right? That's the reason why he came down from heaven, was to redeem us to the Father, to redeem our fallen human nature, and then once it's been redeemed, his glorified, resurrected body goes to heaven as the precursor for what is in store for us if we believe. One day, we will rise from the dead. That's his promise for those who believe. And our bodies, as well as our souls, will be in heaven with God forever and ever, right? united to God. So that's what this idea of divinization is. It's becoming transformed, conformed to God so that we can live with him forever. So now when Jesus left earth, he didn't just kind of leave us behind and abandon us, but he promised that he would be with us always and send signs of his work. And so we can talk about so many different signs that 
God gives us, right? The sign of the church itself, all the sacraments, great works of saints, you know, people who have the power of healing, all kinds of miraculous things that happen. But I want to just kind of point out one to drive this point home. And those are Eucharistic miracles. Eucharistic miracles, right? And so we know and believe that Jesus Christ gave us the sacrament of his body and blood. And we're going to celebrate it today in a few minutes. And a young man here is going to receive it for the very first time here tonight is Jesus. It looks like bread. It tastes like bread. But it's his body and blood, soul and divinity. We can see that with the eyes of faith. But sometimes a miracle happens. And that bread and wine looks like flesh. It might even have blood, right? 99.99999% of the time, it still looks like bread. But we know that it's Jesus. But sometimes, to reinforce our faith, God gives us a miracle, and it transforms, looks like a piece of flesh. And in fact, in modern times, as some of these Eucharistic miracles have occurred, science has tested these and been able to show that it is human tissue. Nobody kind of did a slip and put a piece of steak in there. It's human tissue. They can do the blood typing and everything, right? Reinforcing that the Eucharist is Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity. So in the same way that he's in heaven, body, blood, soul, and divinity, he comes to you tonight in the Eucharist. So in the same way that he ascended into heaven, bringing his humanity to heaven, he wants to do the same thing for each one of you transforming you closer to him, conforming you to Jesus, conforming you to God, so that you too can go to heaven. So everyone who is properly disposed to receive Holy Communion tonight will come forward and be able to receive Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity. The same Jesus who existed from all time, who was born of the Virgin Mary, the same Jesus who rose again on Easter and ascended on this day, ascended into heaven. That's who's coming to you tonight. That's who's coming to each one of you. And so the Son of Man, Son of God became man so that man might become God. That's what divinization means. And that's what he wants to do tonight. So how will you respond?